Hey guys, so Lord here, back again with another review. Today we'll be taking a look at the McFarland Toys Spawn Universe Soul Crusher. And before we get into it, let us first take a look see at both the front and the back of the packaging. So without further ado to you, let's get into it. Now before we get into the meat and taters of this review, the Soul Crusher does come with a few accessories. The first of which is this big old honkin' sniper rifle, complete with a big ass serrated blade on the front. Now if you guys have been keeping up with my throwback Thursdays as of late, you know you can't be packing heat in the Spawn Universe without a big ass honkin' blade on the front of your firearms. So this guy is following the rule. That's the rule. If you ain't doing that, you're doing it wrong. That said, this weapon did come out the package a little bit warped. I managed to straighten it out a little bit with some heat, but it could use some more work, but I guess it's fine for right now. And it does fit well in his right hand, which has a trigger finger. The other one doesn't for some reason. Maybe to hold that with two hands? I don't know. That said, he also comes with the traditional hockey puck stand we're used to seeing with all McFarlane figures, albeit this one has a Spawn logo on it, whereas the DC ones have the DC logo that I can't see on it. I mean, let's be clear. Can't really miss that big old white Spawn logo there. Just saying. But uh, getting his arm out of the way, last but certainly not least, he comes with a little sidearm pistol here. Again, it'll work in the right hand only i guess you could put it in the left hand but again it doesn't have a trigger finger for some reason so he can't dual wield weapons which kind of sucks but it's okay i'm mostly going to leave it in there anyways taking a closer look at soul crusher here uh, talking about that name for a sec that just sounds like a dude you don't want to mess with that and it's a really good deep cut song of of a earlier Xandria album. And for those of you metalheads out there, Xandria is one of many European metal bands that is like Nightwish, but not quite. Uh, at least not as famous. <laughs> that said, keeping those metal references going, he does remind me a lot of the Sodom mascot or the Five Finger Death Punch mascot. I think that one's name is Knucklehead. I can't remember the Sodom one. And then wasn't there a Metallica dude wearing a gas mask at one point around the Injustice for All era? It was also in the uh, Through the Never movie. It's like a white gas mask. I don't know. Good stuff regardless, but this guy is freaking cool looking. I really dig the aesthetic of this dude. I'm not really into the whole tactical thing, but in this case, since it is a new character and not the curse like everyone thought it was, Again, kind of made fun of people who thought it was my throwback Thursday of the vintage curse figure, but at any rate, this is clearly not the curse. It's a new character entirely. Really, it's more like a replacement for Angela and characters like that because he is a hunter of hell spawns. I don't know who he's working for, but it seems to me like he's particularly interested in tracking down and taking out Al Simmons. And the first she spawn, not the uh, Jessica Priest one that's out in this line right now, but the first one that's, I want to say Al Simmons' daughter that didn't quite make it. I don't know. The, the spawn universe, it's a bit of a blur for me, but I just love the aesthetic so much. I don't care about the lore to a point. I care about the core parts, but all the other stuff that came after the 90s cartoon, I could give or take, I guess. But at any rate, articulation on this guy is pretty good. It's going to be hindered in the head here because of this hood piece, but you can rotate it side to side. You can look up and down a little bit. Not too much pivot, but you get a little bit. Uh, his cape is pretty thick, so it is going to get in the way, but not too bad. It should also be worth noting he does have this tuber going from his mouthpiece to this little pack on his butt here. Which gave me Stormtrooper vibes at first, but now it's just looking more like a regular kind of pack piece and not a tube like the Stormtroopers have. That said, I'm a little bit disappointed with this gas mask design. I still love this figure, but I think the gas mask could have been a little cooler because if anyone could design a cool looking gas mask, it'd be Todd McFarlane. I would expect something a little bit more 
skeletal or monstrous from a guy like that, but it's whatever. I guess less is more in this case, and really that's that's nitpicking the design, that's not nitpicking the figure, right? As far as his arms go, his shoulders can move out. Uh, he can't really do the Jesus Christ pose. I mean, the cape just gets in the way, so I just tend to keep this arm down. But you can get this arm out, move it around a little bit. It does have a shoulder pad sculpted to the cape here, which will get in the way a little bit, but not too much. He has that ball joint in there, but it doesn't give you a, a ton of range. It gives you a little bit, but uh, you can rotate these as well. He does have a bicep swivel. He's got a double joint in the elbow, which can get you all the way up to there. He's got a bit of the Cliffs of Dover going on, but nothing too bad. Not as bad as the um, Batman from the Endless Winter Wave. And you're going to want to be careful with these double elbows. Maybe just move this top one and then move this bottom one afterwards because you will warp the uh, gauntlet here which goes right up to the elbow. So, you know, you could do one of two things. You could just use this top joint or you could shave some of this down to uh, get a little bit more range out of it. Kind of surprised this isn't just sculpted to the arm, but at any rate, his wrists do have the uh, ball hinges in there. They are a little tricky to move, but you can do it. This one goes in and out for me. The other one goes up and down for the gun. So, you know, I got him to move at the very least in the directions I prefer. As for his torso, you can rotate him side to side. Be careful with this tuber here. You don't want to tear it off. But you can rotate his torso. You can crunch him back and forth a little bit. Uh, same with the waist. But it is going to be hindered by his armor piece here. And, of course, the, uh, the cape as well. Which, again, pretty thick and dense cape. I wouldn't mind seeing... Uh, some soft goods at some point in this line just to allow for a little bit more range as far as his hips go you can move them forward you can move them back out back down thigh cut double joint at the knee which looks pretty decent uh, not too much of the cliffs of dover going on in there we'll say the knees are getting better with uh, mcfarland figures as of late and then instead of the ball hinge he has a similar joint to the endless winter batman it's just a bit of a boot cut it's not the cleanest like if you turn it too much it starts to break the sculpt up but it's not terrible and the ankle hinges are a lot tighter because of it so i will take that all day every day seven days a week if that means we get tighter ankles i really don't care about the cut kind of messing with the sculpt because those ball hinges mess the sculpt up even more than these that said, he does have a rocker and a toe hinge on each side. And on him, they're kind of both whatever. He's got some tread on the bottom of his shoes. Just combat boots here. And some peg holes for the hockey puck stand. Which y'all knew that already. But yeah, Soul Crusher here. Really cool looking figure. Fortunately, I haven't managed to get him into any kind of crouching pose. Mostly because of that cape. But uh, at any rate, getting his gun in his hand be easier said than done but I think I can pull it off push this in wrap this around there that's better and uh, there he is decked out with his big old honk and sniper complete with big ass serrated blade on the front as it should be Really awesome figure, man. Uh, probably one of my top 10 of the year so far. I'm not joking. I love this guy. He is freaking cool. Even though I don't know squat about him, other than he just must have a thing against hell spawns, because why would he be trying to track him down and take him out, right? But with that being said, let's now move on and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here is the Soul Crusher next to a couple other figures from the Spawn Universe line. Raven Spawn and the Gunslinger. Is it just me or are Hell Spawns just naturally tall as shit? I guess this guy's compensating with that big ass sniper rifle, isn't he? Next up, here he is alongside a couple of Batman figures from the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. 
Batman Beyond and the Rebirth Batman in case you wanted to fudge this guy into your Batman Rogues Gallery. And last but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus, Okay, Eleven Spawn, who's about on par as far as height goes with good old Soul Crusher here. So I guess we're just going to have to wait for that more traditional looking Spawn with the garbage thrown to really get a gist of the scale for the Spawn universe line. But with that being said, time to wrap things up and some final thoughts. Overall, and while I may not know a whole heck of a lot about Soul Crusher, as a character, to my understanding, he is a new addition to the Spawn universe as a pseudo-Angela character type replacement, as it were. I don't care. I love this figure. This is one of my top ten figures of the year so far. He looks badass standing there with his big old honking sniper rifle. And he looks like he's ready for the apocalypse. Again, fingers crossed that doesn't happen anytime soon. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And uh, it should also be worth noting that uh, he's got a bit of a curse vibe going on, which I can kind of understand why people thought this guy was the curse at first, but at the same time, it didn't stop your boy from making fun of everybody for that with his throwback Thursdays of the vintage curse figure from Spawn Series 3. So please check that out if you haven't already. That said, if you're into the Spawn Universe line like I am, I highly suggest you pick this guy up. I think of the basic figures in the wave, he is the strongest of the three, given the fact that the other two are just kind of reissues slash variants. That's not saying very much, but I think of the entire Spawn Universe line, though, I think this guy's my favorite so far. The quality is top-notch. The sculpt and paint is enough for me personally and he comes with enough accessories to do a lot of cool stuff with and he's fun to pose i got him in a really kick-ass pose here for you guys so you know i don't like toot my own horn but i think that's pretty pretty badass if i do say so myself so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this review if you are so inclined please don't forget to comment like subscribe and hit the bell so you know whenever i upload more reviews like this one if you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. But as always, keep the comments civil. This world sucks enough as it is. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.